The Municipal Demarcation Board, also known as the MDB, is an independent institution established in February 1999 in terms of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa. The MDB is responsible for the demarcation of municipal and ward boundaries, the assessment of municipal capacity to perform their constitutional mandate and to provide advisory services to the minister and MECs responsible for local government on matters related to their mandate. The MDB has, through its mandate, worked with citizens and groups to demarcate municipalities that provide quality services to meet the social and economic needs of all communities. Against the backdrop of South Africa's constitutional democracy and as the MDB celebrates its 20th anniversary, it continues to contribute towards spatial transformation in South Africa, thereby reversing the apartheid spatial logic. This has been evident through the integration of previously fragmented communities, rationalization of the total number of municipalities, and the successful and timely delimitation of wards for local government elections since the year 2000. In essence, uh, apartheid was implemented through the governance of municipal spaces on the basis of race. And from the 1950s onwards, this was informed by the spatial planning standards of the Newtown movement. Coupled with the homeland and decentralization policies, these collectively led to the sprawling municipal spaces which were functionally linked but racially separated. During the constitutional negotiations, uh, the national provincial governance architecture was given priority while the local government's architecture was to be resolved at the later stage, of which the 1998 white paper became quite crucial because it informed a suite of local government legislation such as the Municipal Demarcation Act, the Local Government Systems Act and the Municipal Structures Act. Thus, between 1996 and December 2000, uh, which covered the pre-interim and interim periods of local government reform, was mainly about ensuring that the separate areas created through apartheid legislation were governed within a single municipal structure, as opposed to the separate Black Local Authorities Act areas, the town councils and the management committees. This was based on the recognition that despite apartheid spatial and social separation, local areas were functionally linked in various ways. The concept of wall-to-wall -wall municipalities emerged out of this and from the need to have all parts of the country within a municipal area. The post-apartheid local government legislation dissolved provincial demarcation boards. The Demarcation Act of 1998 gave birth in 1999 to a single independent board, which is the Municipal Demarcation Board. In 1999, when the MDB started its work, it focused on rationalizing municipalities to ensure social and geographical coherence, to promote municipal capacity, to enable sharing of resources, and to enable functionality in terms of social interaction, economic interdependence, and the shared transportation networks. Thus, spatial transformation in the context of municipal demarcation was also linked to a transformation in governance and the creation of post-apartheid integration of all aspects of the municipal realm. In 2000, the board rationalized uh, the total number of local authorities from 843 to 284 municipalities. This included the six metropolitan municipalities of Johannesburg, Cape Town, Etequini, Chwani, Kuruleni and Nelson Mandela Bay. It also included 47 district municipalities and 231 local municipalities. It was in this period that the district management areas were also demarcated. These DMAs were part of district municipalities and did not form part of any other municipality. They included remote farming areas, nature reserves, and forests. By 2006, the second board further rationalized the municipalities down to 278 and declared an additional two Category A or metropolitan municipalities. And these were Mangaum and Buffalo City, thereby increasing the number of metropolitan municipalities to eight. That board further facilitated the dissolution of cross-boundary municipalities 
and the withdrawal of district management areas because they proved to be very difficult and costly to manage, especially since cross-boundary municipalities were themselves among the least resourced. The third board reduced the number of municipalities further to 267, which included 44 districts, 8 metros and 215 local municipalities. Following the 2016 local government election, this current board reduced local municipalities to 205 with the same number of 44 districts and the same number of 8 metropolitan municipalities resulting in 257 municipalities in total. There continues to be a need to better understand the performance of municipalities, an aspect embedded in the objectives for demarcation of municipal boundaries. Underlying local government performance are three key interdependent but distinct set of issues, namely the context in which a municipality finds itself representative of the socio-economic and legacy factors that constrain the ability of a municipality to perform, the capacity that it employs which includes resources such as staffing and financial resources, skills and competences, systems and processes, as well as the governance and leadership behavior of councillors and heads of executives, which determine the ability of a municipality to perform well. Unsurprisingly, in January 2015, Section 22.2 of the Municipal Demarcation Act was invoked for the first time since the MDB's inception by the Minister for Cocta to address failing municipalities through the amalgamation of municipal boundaries as part of the government's Back to Basics program. Due to factors including timing, such as being too close to the 2016 local elections, this attracted litigations, criticisms, and in some areas, violent protests. At the end, the board approved only 12 out of the 34 cases that were proposed by the Minister for Amalgamations. While favorable court judgments over the years confirm that the board's decisions are consistent with the legislative provisions, several lessons were learned and the proposals were made to government to specifically facilitate review of the 20-year-old demarcation legislation for it to resonate with a maturing democracy, increasing public access to affordable review mechanisms, and the essence of meaningful public engagement. It is incumbent on the MDB to be open to public involvement in its activities. The current board has continued an extensive public consultation and participation process with various stakeholders. The MDB ensures participation and consultation with stakeholders such as municipalities, national and provincial government, communities and traditional leaders amongst others. This ensures and enables an open, transparent and accountable process. To this end, the current board adopted the regionalization strategy in order for it to have a presence and footprint in every province, as opposed to having a situation where its constitutional mandate is carried out from head office. Implementation of the regionalization strategy will enhance the board's appreciation of the local dynamics and engagement with local stakeholders. The MDB could not have achieved its success without the strategic partnerships it has developed over the years. These include the Independent Electoral Commission and the Fiscal and Finance Commission. The board has memorandum of understanding with them and we work very closely together. Cocter, Salga, the National House of Traditional Leaders, uh, the Surveyor General, Stats SA, the CSRR and the HSRC of course other partners without whom the board could not do its work. The National House of Traditional Leaders is a national statutory body of traditional leaders that is a critical role player and is consulted regularly by the Municipal Demarcation Board. Some of the challenges involve tribal and ethnic differences between communities, which leads to the refusal of being included in the same municipality. The struggling of traditional leadership areas 
into two or more municipal and ward boundaries requires extensive, in-depth consultations between the House and the MTB. Consultation is necessary to maintain harmony in the various affected communities in order to support and address the serious challenges in terms of service delivery, development, governance and social cohesion. In 2018, the board considered the proposed redemarcation of some of the municipal boundaries of Buffalo City Metropolitan Municipality and Mutua Local Municipality in the Eastern Cape. The redetermination of municipal boundaries in this instance enhanced community access to services and ensured that the area is not split by a municipal boundary. When we started to understand things in 1960s and all those things, we were under King Longstown local community. And even after we voted in 1984, we were under the King Longstown local government. All of a sudden, things changed in 1996. Uh, when we go as usual or normal to, to our offices in, in King Longstown area, we were told we are no longer serviced by King Longstown, we are underpaid, which surprised us, all of us. And it took time to adjust ourselves to that uh, situation and eventually we would try to go there, but we find it so difficult to get services from them. Because we, it's too far, it's about 60 kilometers from here. Meantime, King Longstown, from here to King Longstown, about 11 kilometers. Not even a single child or, or person who is working in Pedi, even up to now. Because nobody cared to go there in Pedi to look for for job. Municipal services were so poor, uh, except the, the, the national thing which was after Mandela. We were told now we are going to get toilet, we are going to get electricity, we are going to get water. And we, those things really did happen to us. We got those things. But after that, we never get anything right. Complain about coming to all, complain about the school, the security condition of the school, the tipping tank, fans for the, our cattle, nothing, nobody cared for us. But eventually, people told us about the uh, MTB, that there is a process, but I said it's too late, but let's wait until 2011 when the new application is going to be submitted. That's when we started again. Uh, they wrote to me, I think, late 2017, that uh, they are going to rectify this thing, whole, they are going to do this technical alignment. And we regard it as a victory for us, you know, the whole process. I mean, we end, uh, accept this is a democratic process which we wanted all along. And we, we are going to be better served by the municipality because we know Pedi, um, Mosha municipality, doesn't have funds doesn't get funds. It's only the grant from the national government. With Buffalo City, really, we, we, we say, I don't think there will be any problem for us now uh, regarding our, our needs now, because we have got a committee hall which has been, we fought for it. Most of the locations here around us, they've got committee hall. We don't have one. The deep tank for us is in a dire state. We don't know. We normally get tip from government. Even if we get tip from government, we can't tip because we don't have a tip. And grazing camp, cattle go all over the, these surrounding areas. We don't have grazing camps fenced. We expect from Buffalo City the following things. Uh, to, to upgrade the school here, because this school was never built by the government. It was built by by, by, by us, by our fathers, and to, to provide us with clinic facilities. Not the mobile clinic which is comes, nobody knows it's, there's a clinic, but we know we want a facility clinic to be built here. We want the, 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 the grazing camp, we, we, we want the, the shed for, 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 for our sheep to be shared. You know. The MTB people uh, are coming down to, for the notices, if there are certain things going to happen, like meetings or, 
And people really, they will appreciate that because they say now there is a democratic process going to happen for us. And then they told us how it's going to, all these stages are going to happen. They've done things in, in a democratic way. Everybody is, is happy because nobody is fighting. Yeah, I mean, even if, even though the boundaries, we went back to uh, before 1994 to, to original boundaries. Nobody is complaining because they know that things are done in a proper way. Although most of traditional communities are still plagued by poverty and underdevelopment, they have since the year 2000 embraced the new municipalities as determined by the MDP. These communities see it as an opportunity to improve their socio-economic situation. However, demarcation in traditional communities does not come without challenges. Many of our communities often complain about municipal and what boundaries splitting their areas either into more than one ward or municipality. Due to the cordial relationship between the MDP and the National House of Traditional Leaders, we have and continue to find solutions to ensure that all challenges are resolved. The traditional leadership is available to assist the MDP through its many structures during the demarcation process now and in the future. The National House of Traditional Leaders is of the view that the MDP is independent and has been carrying out its work without fear or favor. As the House, we trust in the MDP as an institution and we believe that the track record of the MDP speaks for itself. The MDB has successfully redetermined a 10-year-old dispute in municipal boundaries between Greater Litaba and Guiani local municipalities, affecting the area of Mamathlepa and received immense support from the affected communities. The two municipalities concurred with the community and supported the MDB's proposed boundary changes. Uh, we discovered this in 2010 that uh, the village of Block 18 and Mamatlepa is divided into two pieces, whereby the other piece is in Greater Guiani and the other one is in Greater Letawa sub-district. Then we discovered that we must make sure that because we are not getting the services between the two municipalities, we must stand up and make sure that we get the correct municipality to deliver the services to us. We belong nowhere. That means we are not recognized. This village and these people are not recognized. That is why they are not feeling well. The people of nowadays, if they realize that they are not recognized, they embark on the strike. And what they do, they close the roads. Some learners couldn't write their trial because the roads were closed. Some people could, uh, even died because uh, the ambulance were not allowed to get inside. The services that we were getting, they were saying that they have managed to take them a piece from Greater Gyan and the other one from Greater Tav. Services like houses, toilets. Sometimes I can just mention even the employment for the cleaners in the municipalities. We don't have even one here. And even the street uh, grading, we were not getting enough services for that. The clinic is not available. We are using the nearby clinic that is found in the ne nearby village, Seapole village. We are struggling about water. There is water in our village, but it comes from the bowl. But when the machine is broken, the, it takes time for those people who must come and assist us to come and uh, make sure that the machine is functioning because we were not belonging to any of the municipalities. Even the community goes to the taps and collect and fetch the water. And it's not all the village lines of pipe of water that people are getting water. Some taps don't have water. This water is not clean and people will have to buy water. So what about those who are not working? They don't have money. That is where they, we say we were suffering, people were suffering. 
we are also suffering in case of agricultural infrastructures, whereby the Department of Agriculture is having this program of Fejadal. When the citizen of Block 18, they went to Great Tower to register for assistance, they say they must go to Gyan. When they go to Gyan, Gyan they say they must come to the town. It's whereby we, we, we are having a problem with that. People were complaining about what about us? We pay our tax. Why those tax doesn't help us? People were, were suffering because they, could, they couldn't get employment. They keep on being people, poor people. They keep on being poor people. Gyan is too far, it's plus minus, it, it's about 100 kilometers from here to Gyan and you can pay 70 rand to go to Gyan and come back. And uh, you cannot go and work at Gyan because sometimes you will be having a problem of transport. Letaba is about 40 kilometers and it's about 50 rand to go and come back. The people want to be part of Greater Letaba because it's too near for them. Even the transport is too cheap. Even the road, it's viable. And then uh, they can also work there. Every day they can just go there and work there. We managed to engage the, municipal, uh, the municipalities, the IEC, and the councillors also, so that they must assist us in solving this problem of uh, Block 18 Mamakleba to be allocated in Greater Litawa. Then, from 2015, it's whereby we managed to engage the law, the legal advisors to assist us to engage with the Municipal Demarcation Board to assist uh, the village of Mamadleba to be allocated in Greater Litawa. And it's what the community is in need of. We are happy because we just hope that things will change to better because we will be able to get the services that we are needing. The MDB has followed all the processes of allocating Mamadjaba Block 18 to be in Greater Tower, and the MDB has redetermined the boundary of Block 18 to be in Greater Tower. Then what we are waiting for now is the MEC to declare the boundary finally. We were like children without parents. This parent saying, I'm not your mother, go this side. When you go this side, say, I'm not your mother. Now, our mother is Greater Litava Municipality. We just want to thank you, to thank MDB. In consultation with the Independent Electoral Commission, the MDB delimits the boundaries of municipal wards, which are geopolitical spaces for voting in local elections. The IC first certifies the National Common Voters' Roll according to municipal signals. Then the Minister for Cooperative Governance publishes in the National Gazette the formula to be used by MECs to determine the number of councillors per municipality. A key determinant in that formula is the number of registered voters. The increase of registered voters has, over the years, led to an increase in the number of councillors and wards. The law provides that 50% of councillors in a local and metropolitan municipality become ward councillors and the number of wards must be equal to the number of ward councillors. Thereafter, the MDB delimits municipal wards. Though the MDB tries as far as possible to maintain the existing ward boundaries in order not to disrupt communities and municipal services, the increased number of wards within a fixed geographical space makes the change of ward boundaries absolutely necessary. The IEC and MDB have had a strong relationship over the past 20 years. It's recognized by both that the IEC and MDB are interdependent. Through mutual cooperation, the IEC has over the years successfully administered municipal council elections based on the demarcation of municipal boundaries and the delimitation of ward boundaries by the MDB. The MDB, on the other hand, makes use of the IEC's network of voting districts and registered voter population. One of the highlights during this period was the original delimitation of ward boundaries by the MDB ahead of municipal elections in 2000. 
This was achieved under extreme time pressure as well as limited spatial data and enabled the IEC to administer the first set of credible free and fair municipal elections in democratic South Africa. The two institutions strongly collaborate through knowledge sharing of geospatial data, consultations and expertise. There is also regular communication between the MDB and its stakeholders through various committees. Building on strong relations between the IEC and the MDB, including the enhanced sharing of spatial data and expertise, can improve the performance of both institutions. This is especially important when addressing issues in instances where communities are divided and in combating local level tensions and conflict during the administration of elections. The priorities of the fourth board have been to make solid the foundation laid by our predecessors. Firstly, to protect the independence and integrity of the organization. Secondly, to leverage the interdependence and strengthen the cooperative governance relationships with institutions that are key role players in the local government sector. Thirdly, to enhance the capacity and capabilities for research and knowledge management and necessary basis for credible demarcation decisions. Fourthly, based on the constitutional principles of a participatory democracy and meaningful engagement, the board elevated public participation and outreach to be one of the MDB's strategic goals, taking it far beyond the prescripts of legislation. And lastly, in the absence of demarcation regulations, we developed indicators that will ensure consistent application of the demarcation factors and objectives. The absence of a concrete vision and agenda for local government restructuring remains a thorny issue. Debates on the ideal architecture for local government in South Africa continue without an end. Around issues of future and relevance of district municipalities in some areas, the wall-to-wall -wall municipalities, and governance of intermediate cities. All these are critical in as far as they inform the holistic space economy and the demarcation of municipal boundaries in the long term. As South Africa boldly faces the future challenges of local and global economic shifts, evolving technological advancements, globalization, drastic climate change and African economic growth, the MDB continues to strive to be an inclusive, cohesive, integrated, sustainable and viable organization for defining boundaries for effective local government.